In this video, we are going to talk about vectors and we're going to try to figure out how to find their magnitude and how we're going to find their direction. All right, so good news is um, you don't have to really pull anything new. There's not necessarily any new formulas. It's all going to build off of trig stuff that we've done in the past. Um, so let me start with that when you're talking about kind of a generic vector, it has a tendency to be labeled as V. So vector V is what that represents. And this formula, which is not something that you have to remember, it's going to be built off of something else that you probably are very familiar with. Um, but that's going to represent the formula for finding the magnitude. The magnitude is the length of your vector. So if you see these kind of little absolute value looking symbols when there's double bars, that represents the magnitude. Okay, so um, I, well, you'll see. So let's draw a picture. So if we have a vector in standard position, so we're coming from the origin and the endpoint looks like this. Okay, so um, we're gonna go out one, two, three, four, up one, two, three. So that's the point four, three. So this would be representing our vector. And our magnitude is this length right here. So could I absolutely take those values, plug it into the formula and do the formula and that's gonna give me the magnitude? Totally. But um, I don't wanna remember another formula. So I think of this right here as I drop down always to the x-axis 100% of the time, whether I have to go up, whether I have to go down, I always go to the x-axis and I make a right triangle. And as soon as I do that, I now have trig and I have Pythagorean theorem that I can do. So I don't have to do anything new. So if I'm going to find that length right there, that's just Pythagorean theorem. So four squared plus three squared is going to equal the hypotenuse squared. So your magnitude is equal to hypotenuse. Same idea, same concept. Okay. So this is 16, this is nine equals x squared, that's adding 25, x equals x squared. To get rid of the square on that, we would square root both sides. So our x would be five. So our magnitude would equal five. So the length of that would be five. All right, so that square root in the formula, the formula is Pythagorean theorem. There's a leg squared plus the leg squared. Um, and then we would square roots to get the hypotenuse by itself. So really that formula is coming from the steps that it takes here to solve that. All right, so if we go to a different one, uh, we're gonna go left and down. So I'm just gonna try to draw this appropriately. We're gonna go left, two, down, five, two, five. And there's our point, which that means there's our vector. Okay, so I wanna find the length of that. And I'm going to go up to the x-axis to make my right triangle so I can do Pythagorean theorem. Um, in this world, we do want to have negatives on them. Um, Pythagorean theorem won't matter, but when we try to find the angle measurement, the, the signs will matter. So if we do Pythagorean theorem, we're going to look at negative 2 squared. Oops. So leg squared plus leg squared plus negative five squared equals x squared. And why the negatives don't matter is because you're gonna square that. So that's gonna give you a positive four, that's gonna give you a positive 25. Um, so to be honest for the calculator, since I'm gonna square it, and if you don't know that it's four or 25 or whatever value you're trying to square, I probably wouldn't even enter in the negative because I'm about to square it. Okay, on everything else, I'm gonna throw that negative, but not if I'm gonna square. So that adds up to 29 equals x squared. We'll square root both sides. And so if you throw that into a calculator, you're gonna get a decimal of five and a whole bunch of decimals. And if we round it, we'll round it to one decimal place. So square root 29, it's gonna get us 5.4. Okay, so our magnitude, equals 5.4. All right. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out an angle measurement. That is our direction. So um, we'll show you that it's going to involve some trig. I don't have to remember any formulas. I'm going to do stuff. I'm going to build off of kind of what I'm already familiar with. 
So I'm going to plot this point. So it's actually the first, same as the first point. So we're out four, up three. There's our magnitude. Okay, so if there's our magnitude, we, uh, there's our vector. We already know the magnitude is five, um, but we're looking for this angle right here. So I'm going to drop down, make my right triangle. I know I'm out four and I'm up three. So what I have going on now is trig because I'm trying to find an angle related to sides. So I'll throw out my Sokotoa and I just need to figure out which trig function we're using. Are we using sine, cosine, or tangent? It's all dependent upon the situation. So if here's our angle, this is the opposite side. This is the adjacent side. And so the trig function that has opposite and adjacent is tangent. So we set up our equation as tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. And the only way we can ever find an angle measurement is we will do the inverse tangent of that fraction. All right, and then it's just something that we plug in going into the calculator. So first thing is I wanna make sure that I'm in the right mode and I'm in degrees. Um, that's something for a graph. Uh, and we're doing inverse tangent of three divided by four. And that's gonna get us our angle. So that angle right there should be about um, 36.9 degrees. So 36.9 degrees. Okay. And that was finding magnitude and finding direction. Um, but there are formulas, but you don't have to. You can just kind of build off of what you're already familiar with, which is Pythagorean theorem and just your basic trick stuff.